So hey listen, I don't know how many of you are interested in today's episode, but I just noticed that I own quite a few of Craflexes. So I thought I'll show them all to you and discuss their differences and pros and cons and whatnot. This is not a review or any kind of how to use a Craflex, but maybe I'm trying to explain to you and myself why do I need them all and what's the difference. Now, uh, Craflexes are interesting. Uh, they were never really imported to Europe as new. So it's a bit difficult to find a good Craflex here in Europe. They are plentiful in the US and I envy you guys who have access to that mass of good Craflexes. Here it's hard to find. So it seems that to me whenever I find locally or somewhere here in Europe a Craflex being sold I take a look at it and pretty often seem to buy one. Okay, uh, what do I like about this? These are extremely sturdy cameras. They are pretty um, easy to use. I, they have a couple of characteristics that I really like. First of all, big image size, 4 times 5 sheet film, most of them, and then uh, these are supposed to be used handheld, so these are not the kind of cameras you put on the tripod and take your life slowly, but these are fast moving action cameras. They are called press cameras and back in the days they were heavily used by press photographers. So you don't have time with the, with the tripod or focusing or tilting or raising, you just need to shoot. I'm good at that, I'm, I don't have a patience to do photography in the right way. So hey, here we go. This is the first one that I ever got. This is a Craflex Crown Graphics. Extremely nice unit and nice specimen. Uh, I serviced the lens fairly recently, so now it should... Let me see... Fire one second correctly. Sounds good. And the shutter is in the lens. Uh, the Crown Graphics is different than any other Graflex for that it lacks the curtain shutter. It's a simply a construction. It is basically just a wooden box, a bellows and the lens board. That's also why it's so good. It's a little bit lighter than other Graflexes. There's less things to go wrong. Now if we compare these cameras to other 4 times 5 like field cameras. There are certain limitations and I guess that's why some people don't like this. Uh, you, can, you can raise the lens. I mean if you think about the lens movement you can, you can certainly raise this. There's a little bit movement here. And then you can tilt it. Now typically the Graflex camera tilts upwards which is kind of strange but I modified this a bit, which is easy to do. So now it tilts downwards. So I can I can actually get neat landscape photographs so that everything is in focus because I can tilt it downwards. Now, if you want to do anything with your Craftflex, fix it, maintain it, change it. Everything is easy. Wooden box, flathead screws. Everything is big enough for me to see and handle them. So this is a do it yourself person's, you know, favorite camera. Now you can then of course change the lens. It has a basically a lens port like the most of these and, and the lens can be removed. And then, um, you know, I for example use quite a bit uh, this larger the lens. Now the regular lens that comes with it typically is 135 millimeter f4.7. Uh, but this is uh, 75 millimeter Nikon. It goes nicely here. Like this. But now then and now then, sometimes uh, when you use wider angle lenses, by the way, you, you can use wider lenses with crown graphics than with any other Graflex because this is more shallow, so the large um, wide angle lenses go closer to the body. 
just about there that's that's the right place for it so easily if you have a wide angle lens it gets so close to the railing that you get that railing into the pitch so what you can do with craftlex you can i don't know how you are supposed to do it but i do it with my chin you press this and then you push it downwards and it drops the the rail down so now you can actually it, it's no longer visible to the lens the railing when you drop it so that's a handy additional thing that they added to Craflexes from some some year forward now these are rangefinder cameras so if you use the standard lens or you adjust your sh uh, your rangefinder accordingly you can just shoot it as a point and shoot and that's what I typically do so you focus through the rangefinder and then you compose with this other viewfinder now the rangefinder is fairly easy to adjust for different lenses and I've done that many times but it's not something that you want to do when you are out there shooting so it's something that you want to do at home so in that sense you are tied with one single lens when you go out there shooting if you want to shoot with rangefinder but of course you can always focus with the crown glass and the crown glass you know it's like traditional four times five shooting let me put the standard lens back So hey, as I told you, these are meant to be used fast. These are fast-paced point-and-shoot cameras. So how do you take it from this position to actually taking a photo? Like I'm walking down the street, I'm holding it from the from the handle, and I got some bit film on me. So how do I go from here to a photo? Open it up, pull this out cock the shutter, put the film slide in, take the dark slide out, focus through the range finder, compose, press the shutter. So now then, this is a Craflex Crown Graphics. Um, I also have a Craflex Speed Graphics. This is a more famous bigger brother. And the main difference here is with the uh, Speed Graphic. Uh, this is a pacemaker Speed Graphics, as well as this is a pacemaker um, uh, Crown Graphics. This anniversary version is earlier one and these pacemakers are later ones and there are at least two different versions. One where the rangefinder is here at the side. These have similar rangefinders. But then there's a new version where it's on top. So the main difference between these two are of course that there is now the, the shutter inbuilt into the body. I've also like m have not modified for example this tilt. So this is still the original tilt so it tilts upwards like this. I can't tilt it downwards, it always goes up. But as I said it's, it's really easy to change. Uh, the picture taking is basically similar. I can always use the shutter that is in the lens. But now this is why this is slightly different. There is a curtain shutter. Um, this is, and it moves here in the back. This is the beauty and the Achilles heel of these cameras. This is in an excellent condition. And when you take a picture, moves like that. This is in an excellent condition if you ever consider buying a speed graphics. 
um, always consider walking away if this shutter doesn't work. I mean, it is fixable, but especially if this curtain is broken, this material is hard to get and, and it's, that's pretty complicated fix. This is called speed graphics because now this curtain shutter goes all the way up to one one thousandth of a second. And back in the days, this was like hugely advanced and, and fast. They made these anniversary a uh, pacemaker speed graphics from 47 all the way to 1970. So that was a pretty long run. Once again, slight differences. The most notable moving this rangefinder on top. This is a bit heavier than the crown graphics, not much. The reason I want to have this is because of this curtain shutter. Because now it allows me to use it with different kind of lenses that don't have the shutter. This is my latest purchase and I've taken pictures like this. Now then, one more speed graphics. This is an older version. This is so-called anniversary speed graphics. It looks pretty much the same and the basic functionality is the same. Couple of notable differences though, and why I need both of these. Uh, first of all, the lens board is simpler in these earlier cameras. It's just a plank, no curvature, nothing. It's really easy to make your own uh, lens board. And I have, for example, made just the lens board from plywood. And now this is an old pr brass lens uh, that I use for portraits. And, and it took me probably like five minutes to make the lens board. Um, when you change the lens, as I think I said earlier, then you can't use the rangefinder anymore. This simpler construction of lens boards makes it easy to self-make the lens boards and then even do crazy things like you, you've seen me using this, this um, enlarger condenser lens. It was fairly easy to make an attachment to this older Graflex. To this newer one, uh, there are all kind of shutter release thingies in front of it that would make it much more difficult to put any kind of strange object <laughs> attached to the lens board. So that's why I need this. This is more flexible what comes to the lens area and what comes to running different lenses. And since it's uh, a speed graphics, now these both are you don't need a separate shutter in the lens, like with these old bronze lenses. These have no shutter, but you can use the inbuilt shutter. Um, with these older Graflexes, uh, there is a very complicated system how you set the speed. It's always a combination of two things. First, you set the tension, tension of the spring. There's a spring that moves the curtain forth and back and then you set the slit size meaning like what what's the hole there it's a combination of these two there are a gazillion of different timing options I mean you can set it to 170 180 190 100 125 150 like all these unnecessary middle steps in between but you can be extremely accurate with your timing with the speed graphics. These newer ones are more rudimentary and you can, it's more like a modern camera, so you can go on from 160 to 125 to 225, 250 and 500 and so forth. But these older ones are insanely accurate or at least appear to be. And then you take pictures like this. Um, 
and with this one I've taken so many different kind of pictures because I can attach different lenses so I've taken portraits and then I've used this enlarger condenser lens to take these dreamy pictures Now one thing that I forgot to mention earlier was that you can always, for different lenses, you can always go old-fashioned and for example I, for this, for, for this speed graphics I have, I, I use this bronze lens quite a bit. So I put a piece of tape here and mark with the pencil different distances. So now it's easier. There's a little notch there. So it's easier for me to see how far do I need to move it. And I can estimate. It says here like 10 meters. Five. You know, it's easier to do it. Do it. Or fairly easy to do it, just estimating from there. If that's enough accuracy for you. Hey, almost forget about this. One more thing, if you consider buying Craflexes, maybe from the model point of view, the most important thing is that what kind of back does your Craflex have? And I have two models versions here. This is so called. Um, Graphic back, this older one, graphic, and this is a graph lock back. I mean, come on, better names would have been needed to make a difference. But here's a basic difference. This older one, this graphic back, is just, uh, I mean, you can open it and look through the viewfinder and you can still take your 4 times 5 sheet film and easily when you hold it in the right way <laughs> easily push it in easy to take pictures and then you take it out but the main difference is that you can't remove this back and the glass that you can do with this newer one this uh, graphic oh sorry craft lock back and when you remove the back which just you just push these two and you pull it out. The ground glass is here and so now you can put all kind of additional things and all kind of whatever you want to put there. You know, one thing that I use pretty often is six times nine roll film back. You can attach here and instead of shooting sheet film you can take panoramic roll film pictures. By the way, and then of course with these newer bags, you can also there's this um, thing that prevents light to go go through if you if you want to really focus it through the crown glass. This is also easy to take off. It just uh, this attaches from here. You just pull this little knob, and you can take this one off, and then the crown glass is here. If you want to have a say magnifying glass and and focus from there. Yeah, I probably forget about many things, but these are the, some of the things that I typically use, so these are important to me. Now, all these cameras were built by Craflex in Rochester, New York. But then I have some other Craflexes that were built by other people. Former and Schwing built Craflexes from 23 to 51. And they build totally different kind of cameras. These are SLR cameras, single lens reflex. 
So what's common with these speed graphics is now this is now this um, shutter mechanism. There's a there's a curtain shutter here that fires like this. But everything else is different. This is an SLR camera, so you focus this through the lens. There's no there's no range finder and it opens like this and then you push out the film cover and here's your lens and and then with this one you photograph like from here this is sort of like you would photograph with your Rolleiflex or, or Hasselblad or anything this is RP series B and RP means rotating back so you put the film cartridge here once again you can just push it there and then if you take a, a portrait picture it's like that but then you can turn it like this and take landscape pictures and back to portrait um, this is from the curtain point of view this is a bit worse stage than my other camera so I eventually need to fix this curtain shutter but as long as it works I'm gonna touch it I, I put some rubber uh, compound rubber spray on, on it to, to fix it and all that and because this is an SLR camera most of the time when I'm photographing with this it's the mirror that prevents the light to go through so even if there are little holes in the curtain it doesn't really matter because when you take a picture when I take a picture I take it like this and I focus and then I take a picture and I immediately move the mirror back so no even if there are little light leaks they don't go right now through and little tiny pinholes in the curtain won't actually affect the picture at all now the limitations are, are many in this camera. Of course this is heavier than any of these other cameras. Also the distance from the lens to the film is humongous. This is really a long distance. And it is because there is a big mirror that moves up and the mirror is huge. Otherwise you can't cover the entire 4 times 5 So it stretches the dimensions of this camera. Now what does it mean when it's a long distance? It means that only few lenses are suitable for this. I actually have only one and it's the original lens. All the other lenses are too far away from the, from the film to focus to infinity because of this weird construction. And these later models, these RP models, they don't even have a detachable lens board. Um, it's fixed you can remove the lens by screwing it and and then you can you can do you know I showed you in some of my earlier videos like tilt shifts and and, and freelancing and whatnot out of these graphlexes this is the more heaviest this is the most complicated it feels more fragile and that's why it may be the most special. Uh, there's something totally crazy and insane about this camera, so that's why I love it. And I take pictures like this. But hey, this is not all. We are running out some table space here, but I need room for one more Graflex. <laughs> oh, this is crazy stuff. I have the little brother for this monster, which is an RP series B camera, but now this is not for 4x5 sheet film. 
this is for 6x9 cm sheet film originally but I use it always with uh, roll film holder so I can use 120 film roll here and take 6x9 cm images. Now it has the same mechanism as the bigger brother so there is a curtain shutter Much lighter and smaller, everything compared to this monster, everything feels like so much lighter and smoother. Uh, of course, because it's much smaller. And, and this curtain is in an excellent condition. And with the roll film, it's also pretty convenient to use it. You just advance the film here and, and that's it. When you make it to the image position, it looks exactly the same. It's a smaller, it's, it's almost like beautiful, like pretty. <laughs> and uh, same functionality for the shutter all the way up to one thousandth of the second. Mm. To my understanding, this Graflex is the one that Victor Hasselblad got inspiration for his Hasselblad, first Hasselblad. He used this as he was visiting uh, Graflex and, and his friends with his father in the US in you know early part of the last century. Just a bit trivia. Okay, so this is not hoarding. As you can see, I need all of these cameras. But can we agree that um, you don't tell to my wife? I don't need an intervention or anything. I just, I just need this all. Hey, thanks for watching. Next time, something else. Mm -hmm.